the Guwahati High Court order. And Priya, I believe you have Mr. Prashant Bhushan with you as well. Well, that's correct. We'll be just uh, speaking to uh, Mr. Prashant Bhushan, uh, an advocate who's, uh, uh, you know, filed several PILs seeking CBI investigations. Now, essentially, uh, uh, Priyank, before I go to Mr. Bhushan, the sense that we've been uh, picking up from various legal sources uh, and legal experts essentially is uh, that they term this order as, as, as something uh, that is uh, that, of course, uh, will have to be challenged at a higher court in the Supreme Court, but also points out, uh, you know, that there could be a lot of questions raised as far as this order is concerned. Now, uh, of course, uh, the con as in the rationale as far as the Guwahati High Court is really is that can an executive order uh, lead to the formation of, uh, of an investigative body which has uh, such a, uh, you know, a, a critical role of investigating such important issues and case cases. However, of course, as uh, Ashpeet also pointed out, that the, uh, the, the essentially government has really relied on various uh, orders of the Supreme Court saying that the Supreme Court orders that have started since about 1970 till about 2010 has given the validation as far as the existence of CBI. Now, just to just give a little bit of a background that essentially uh, it is the Delhi uh, DSPE or the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act under which the CBI functions. This change of name as far as, as, far as the current name or the popular name as Central Bureau of Investigation was a part of an executive order or a resolution that the Home Ministry had filed. Now, let me straight go across to uh, Mr. Prashant Bhushan, who's joining us uh, at, at this point in time, phone line from Delhi. Uh, Mr. Bhushan, my first question essentially to you is that there is, of course, a belief that perhaps this order, and we've also heard the comments of uh, the original Solicitor General, uh, who was representing the case, claiming this that to be an erroneous order. Your first thoughts in terms of the legal perspective and the ramifications of the order, of course, before it's go it's expected to be challenged, but how do you read it? Well, I have not uh, read the judgment, but in any case, you see, the judgment proceeds on some uh, technicality to say that uh, the CBI is not a legally constituted investigative body. Uh, irrespective of whether that uh, technicality is a legally viable technicality or not, let us assume that even if it is a uh, if it's a technicality which has been sort of legally rightly invoked by the Gauhati High Court, uh, there is uh, absolutely no reason whatsoever to say that the CBI uh, cannot investigate. Uh, uh, matters of uh, uh, of corruption, etc., for which it has been constituted. So, therefore, irrespective of what the technicality is, as I said, I have not read the judgment. Uh, there is uh, either it is going to be overruled by the Supreme Court, which is, to my mind, most likely, or uh, in any case, a retrospective validation. Uh, ordinance can be issued by the government, and uh, that would uh, uh, that would set that technicality right. So, in any case, uh, in my view, it's just a storm in the teacup. It's not going to have any effect in the long run or in, even in the short run. Uh, Mr. Bhushan, but just wanted to understand two thoughts, uh, essentially. One is, of course, you know, the, the entire technicality is emerging from the fact that 1963 a resolution came, but it really wasn't sort of validated in terms of an amendment. And now, as you're suggesting, we could look at a retrospective amendment therein. And uh, so essentially, you know, was there a lapse in terms of uh, probably bringing this in your view? And the other part, uh, which, uh, of course, the Guwahati High, High Court order premise is that, you know, an, an important body like the CBI, which, has, which is entrusted by the Act in terms of doing the investigation, cannot be formed just mere on the executive order. Your thoughts on these two aspects, if you could share with us, sir. No, the executive order, as far as I understand it, uh, is basically just renaming the Delhi Special Police Establishment as the Central Bureau of Investigation. And that can certainly be done by even an executive order. But uh, 
irrespective of all that you see to my mind it seems uh, uh, it seems rather uh, absurd for any high court to say that the cbi uh, is not a legally constituted body which cannot do any investigation etc on the basis of this kind of technicality and i am quite sure that the uh, apex court would uh, come down heavily uh, on the guwahati high court for passing this kind of uh, this kind of order i don't think it requires any uh, uh, validation by means of an ordinance but eventually even if it requires some kind of validation that can be done because these issues cannot be decided on the basis of such hyper technicalities as to whether uh, such a uh this is pure technicality whether the uh, renaming of cbi should have been done by an act or by an ordinance how does it make any difference uh, by, by an act or by a executive order